Hello YouTube and uh, internet people. I'm back. My name is Jakub Steiner and I'm going to be showing you more of Blender for motion design. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about textures, uh, materials as well. Um, and we're going to be doing a very simple thing like having an image and putting it on a plane in the in the 3D space and uh, it sounds very easy and you can actually do it now with Blender 2.5 you can do it in about 20 seconds I could do that you know uh, we have a I, I have a, a guy on the in the comments on my blog uh, Peter never I don't really know who, who it is. Uh, Peter, do not watch this because it's going to be me talking about things that we will not need. Um, for the rest of you, we're going to be talking about, uh, uh, well, exactly explaining why there is a difference between what you're rendering and what you're viewing and why why is a, a, an image only a, a you know, there's, there's going to be a UI that, that is uh, several pages long. It's going to be attributes that will look really unfamiliar. And most of these won't affect what we're doing. And it's going to look all complicated for, you know, it's UI that's not really suitable for this. And that is true. Uh, we are using a tiny fraction of what we could be doing with materials. And due to the fact that I'm doing this intro and due to the fact that the uh, the screen cap that I did was uh, 80 minutes long again I'm gonna have to split it in two so you're gonna have this week um, two parts of this tutorial sorry about that sorry Peter but let's get going I apologize that I will be coughing probably uh, a little because I have been feeling sick for the past two weeks. Um, don't know what that is. Maybe it has to do about sitting behind a computer all day. But never mind that. I also apologize for probably going pretty pretty fast. Um, even though I have went slow over the last time but I really want to cover the whole texture business in one go. So let's get going. First of all, again, I'm gonna clean up the the state of the of the scene. I'm gonna shift select, right click, and hold shift to select the two objects, um, and X to delete them, Alt R to um, remove rotation, and Alt G to remove um, uh, the movement of the object and move it slightly upwards by pushing G and restricting to Z axis by holding Z. And we have a camera so camera we're looking down now we're gonna add the uh, the plane uh, I did shift a and selected the plane now we have a plane now if I render which you can do by going to the render buttons um, there's some defaults for for the size which we're gonna change to 10 24 to 768 and I do tap to focus different fields just like in GTK and um, if I try to render this now you can push F12 or hit this button you can see this black uh, that's because we have no light and we have no material uh, so uh, we go straight into the material buttons and if I had new suddenly we have a material that's gray and it has some and actually this is a simulated preview so you can have an idea of how the material looks and it has some specularity and that sort of stuff, but we don't actually want that. There is a special mode that's gonna save us trouble, and that's called shadeless. If I select this, none of this, you know, specular uh, highlights and, and, and diffuse color is gonna come, well, diffuse color would um, come into play, but we're gonna use a texture that's gonna replace all the color information of the of the object so none of this will actually uh, will actually worry about uh, so let's go again um, this is the sort of same interface uh, that, that, that you're gonna see uh, elsewhere you can actually have multiple materials assigned to an object because uh, you know it can be a complex object that has like you know you can have I don't know uh, a house that has a wooden frame 
and a brick wall, etc., and can all be one object. So that's why you can have multiple materials. You can have them, you know, um, even with a mask that that, that makes part of uh, another. Well, it's actually textures. Never mind. But you can have multiple materials. Textures, on the other hand, are. I would say I would make it simple and say that uh, those are the 2D images. Uh, there are multiple textures that are actually 3D, so they can uh, generate uh, that, that um, image in in the Z axis as well as the X Y. But we're gonna stick to the one, and that is an image or a sequence of images or a movie that we're gonna apply to a plane. Again, we're using the most simple setup and. Uh, you will, you will, you know, kind of wonder, man, that is just so complex of a UI to do a simple thing. Well, it is a UI that's not meant for this. It is a UI that that's meant to be very flexible and and, and be able to uh, create really complex materials. And we're only using a fraction. So that's uh, that's an image. So we're gonna load up an image. I've actually prepared a few um, uh, textures. We have this wallpaper. And uh, then, when, then I have the top bar in the um, that you see in the shell. Uh, I actually have two states. One is the state like here, and the other one is when we're in the overview. You can see that the activities button is is pre lit. That's this one. But we're gonna start with the with the wallpaper. So we're gonna open it up. Uh, I'm not gonna expose too much of my file system here. Video, movies. Screencast, Blender, Assets, Textures, Textures. There we go. So I've successfully loaded the texture that is already applied onto material. We're going to go back to that. But um, so you can see in here again a preview. We can actually see the texture and when it's applied to the material because those two are very linked together. Um, you could affect, you know, color, uh, but we're not going to touch this at all. Um, what you want usually for using uh, an RGBA image, so there's the alpha channel, and that it most of the time you want this uh, toggle to be set so that the compositing is is correct and you don't get some ghosting. Um, Sampling again. I don't think we need to change anything. And mapping is how uh, we're gonna talk about mapping slightly, uh, but I think I'm gonna skip most of it and tell you we don't have to worry about the different ways of how a 2D image can be mapped into 3D object. Uh, we're just gonna stick to the basic one, which is the uh, planar projection and because we want the 3d view to update to to see the, the textures in the 3d view as well as the renders we will have to stick to UV mapping let's just simplify things that that is a given you have no idea what, what UV mapping is well fine I, I don't really know all that much either uh, let's just stick to the fact that to, to be able to to see it in the in the 3D view, you need UV mapping. Um, <clears throat> but this effectively says that once we define that that mapping, uh, this is how many times you want this this little image to to repeat. And while in our case, we'll we'll define the UV mapping to match exactly the the, the borders of, of our plane. It still makes sense to set it to clip because otherwise, on the edges there might be some ghosting in in some cases. So this means that the texture will only be applied. So, for example, if we wanted the mapping, if we had a logo, for example, and we wanted to have it in the middle and not really be a, a huge all around, we would just make it clip so it only uh, shows the the logo once and doesn't repeat it as a texture. Um, you can also, you know, tweak the uh, where the crop happens, and this is this is the important. Bit. What is this? Yeah, this is. We'll we leave it to the default because we want this this texture to be mapped as a flat projection. 
and this is the most important thing in 99.9999 percent of the cases what we want is to affect the color and because we will be compositing images that have on the alpha channel we want alpha as well i mean these are separate here uh they're i mean they're separate so you will most likely be keying uh, animating color and alpha together and when things go wrong always go and check that you actually keyed alpha as well as the color and that is essentially it now if we go back we should be all set uh, I'm just gonna make sure that we set UV was that dropping uh, okay so it actually isn't <clears throat> So as you can see, we're only halfway there. Uh, we are set up, we have the image loaded uh, as a texture of a material, but we don't really see anything in the 3D viewport, which is going to be important for us to position things properly so they align. Uh, and we're going to do that in the next part. I promise it's not going to take long for me to do it. And uh, one more thing, uh, starting because this was like the first time that we actually did anything I am going to be tearing up uh, or zipping up um, some of the project files and uh, you will be able to load a, a blend scene with the finished uh, part of, of the screencast uh, and all the assets that are required so you will be able to, to see the the links in the description and somewhere in the, on my blog as well. So again, if you guys like this, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Let me know that you like it, that you want to see more, more products because this is actually quite a bit of work. Uh, it's actually more work than I'm willing to admit, but um, uh, I, I really need you to cheer me up a little to, to bring you more. So thanks guys and I'll see you next time.